Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Asus Transformer Book T100, which is a 10-inch tablet with an Intel Atom Bay Trail processor, a keyboard dock that lets you use it like a notebook, and it sells for around $350 and up, and works pretty well as a uh, sort of regular Windows tablet, but also works pretty well as a notebook or even as a desktop, and I wanted to show you the desktop functionality now. So I've actually got plugged in uh, a couple of things. This is a, a HDMI cable going to a 1080p display. This is a power adapter going to a, a micro USB port. It charges pretty slowly when you're actually using it. It charges much, much more quickly if the device is uh, turned off or idle, um, but it does charge. We've got external speakers plugged in here too. And then on this side, there's a full-size USB port on the keyboard dock that lets you plug in uh, external devices. So I've actually got a wireless keyboard and mouse, and this is the dongle for it. So if you don't love the 10-inch keyboard, which is a little bit small, a little bit cramped, that'll work. So let's go ahead and switch over to the larger display. In graphic options, you can output to, uh, to clone the displays, to do an extended desktop, or just to go to the digital TV. So while the tablet itself has a 1366 by 768 pixel display, uh, it automatically recognizes that it's now plugged into a 1080p display and we're doing 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution. So you can see we've got desktop mode. That doesn't mean that you can't run uh, tablet style applications or Windows 8 uh, modern or Metro style applications. So, you know, we've got access to the Windows Store here and you can download any of the apps that are available from the Windows Store. You can do split screen applications. and we can sift through apps. So let's take a quick look here at the pinball application to see how games work. The game looks great. I'm not so good at playing it. If you wanted to, you could use the Kindle application and read books, use the Comixology application and read comic books. Uh, Windows 8 apps actually look pretty good on the full, uh, larger display, as long as you're sort of used to what to expect from them. Things like the Netflix app or uh, TuneIn radio app are going to work pretty well as well. Uh, but let's, well, let's go ahead and fire up weather, for instance, here. So full screen apps look pretty good, but if you wanted to use this as a desktop PC, I'm assuming you'd want to run more desktop style apps. And so that's what I've actually been doing for the last couple of hours, is using this as sort of my primary work machine. And... Uh, it has about 2 gigs of RAM, um, but that uh, turns out to be more than enough to do some basic activities. So I've been blogging, web browsing, uh, uh, running applications with as many as 16 or 17 tabs in the browser open while uh, occasionally editing images and doing other things. And it, uh, it hasn't really slowed down at all. So let's take, take a look here. Uh, HD video. This is running at 1080p. Um, the browser tab that it was in was out of focus for a while, which is why I probably stuttered a little bit to start, but you can see it plays back smoothly. So no problem with HD video. Uh, web apps work pretty well. Using um, Google Chrome and the LastPass Password Manager, I found that it's uh, remarkably easy to go back and forth between another laptop and uh, one that I'm testing, because all of my settings are sort of right there. So I'm going to go ahead and play you some audio. So Google Music works pretty well. And uh, yeah, no, it's worked. It's uh, been a pretty good blogging tool uh, at 1080p resolution. Apparently, I haven't checked Hootsuite in a little while. Uh, other applications that you might want to run in the desktop mode might include, say, an image editing application. So let's go ahead and fire up GIMP. Uh, for most of my day-to-day -day tasks, I actually just use Irfan View, which lets you do sort of, you know, cut, paste, crop uh, type actions, but 
GIMP is a much more powerful device if you need to do some serious editing, and it tends to take a pretty long time to start on most computers. Uh, but you can see it's loading okay here. In terms of sort of raw computing power, you can check out uh, Lilliputing.com. We have an article that has some benchmarks uh, around 3D Mark and uh, a couple of other graphics benchmarks, and then also some tests in terms of audio and video transcoding. So there you go, that's loading the um, GIMP application. I'm not actually going to edit any pictures because I'm not very good at it, um, but I just wanted to show you how long it takes to load. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up Microsoft Word. Now this is something that actually comes with the, uh, the computer. You get Office 2013 Home and student for free. So that's kind of a nice bonus. Uh, I haven't really spent a lot of time playing with Office 2013, so I don't actually know the menus very well, but it's a pretty powerful application, clearly, even the home and student version. Likewise, we can use Excel, and it loads quickly, gives you access to a powerful spreadsheet application, And I could probably do a lot more if I really knew <laughs> how to use some of these things. So there's a nice little sum. So um, pretty fluid. You can see we can resize windows, move them around, go full screen or not full screen. We could also load PowerPoint, uh, an app I'm even less familiar with, to be perfectly honest. So some people aren't real happy with, I guess, the uh, the dual UI of Windows 8 that is really uh, designed in some ways for touchscreen displays. But as you can see here, uh, Windows 8 works pretty well once you get used to some of the quirks. Uh, toggling back and forth between the, uh, the start screen and the desktop mode, and uh, you can just pin applications for things that you really use frequently, like, say, the uh, File Manager or the Google Chrome Web Browser, in my case, uh, even the, the Google Chrome App Launcher. Uh, so basically, if I never wanted to go to the start screen, I wouldn't have to, but I find it's actually pretty convenient for looking for various things. Uh, you can also oops, sort of move your mouse to the corner, get to various settings, so we could get to the uh, screen brightness, which doesn't actually do anything here, but then there's also volume and other items. Um, so we could bring up the on-screen keyboard, which you really wouldn't want to do in desktop mode, but you can see that we do have full access to everything that you would get, whether you're using this as a tablet or a notebook. Um, we're just using it as a desktop now, with the ability to play games, to edit documents, and uh, to do a lot of multitasking. So you can see right now, for instance, that we have uh, the Windows Store, the Kindle app, the Comic Store, uh, or Comixology app open, and several browser tabs, and an image editor, and some chat windows, and, uh, and it works pretty well. So I've been listening to music, doing some research, writing some blog posts, and keeping Lilliputing up to date, and uh, so far everything's uh, been pretty smooth. It's not the fastest computer you're ever going to find, but for $350 it's really pretty impressive just how much you can do uh, if you're using this as your only machine, just plugging in some peripherals to turn it into a desktop style experience. So this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, uh, testing the ASUS Transformer Book T100 as a desktop style PC.